Hello YouTube. Today is 20th of March 2015. We've got five days to go until first day of spring this year. It'll be on March the 20th this year. So what we're going to do, I've looked at the calendar and supposedly, we all know how Texas weather is, but supposedly there's not supposed to be any more freezing temperatures at least to the end of March. We'll see. I've done pull this tarp down twice now and put it back up. This is the third time it's been up since uh, the tomatoes got planted. We put it up the very last part of last year. This time the entire porch was closed in. Both sides, north side which is to your left, south side to your right, and of course this one piece you see across the end down here. There's also a heater down inside. So what we did is took two tarps, made one, fastened it together in the middle there, and it seemed to make a huge difference as far as keeping the wind out and a little bit more of the cold out also. Once we drop this tarp, you'll see what I'm talking about, but there's a blanket on the left-hand side that's stuck up to one of the rafters. If the temperatures would get down below 30, keep them all inside with the blanket. All right, so without further ado, let's lower this tarp and let's take a peek at what's inside. Okay, and there you have it, the back porch. Once again, it can breathe now. We're gonna get up a little bit closer and take a closer look at these tomatoes and see what all has progressed since uh, last time we took any pictures or videos. Okay, here we are up a little bit closer. I'm just going to run through and show you the tomatoes that are still on the vine. We're going to get up in there and a couple of other things we want to point out to you. Now this tomato plant here, this third one, it is a survivor. Lord, it's got stuff growing out the bucket and I picked those about, oh I don't know, at least three times now and they keep coming back so Apparently some, it's liking something we're putting down in that bucket. There's up that one. This is actually two tomato plants that's come together. You can see down at the bottom they split. And this here is the one that we kind of let go. I've tried to keep them all the single stems. You can tell that the first four, or the first five, are pretty much all single stems. This one down here on the end, not so much. It split, and it, it had split and got going before I really actually paid attention to it. Now you have one main one to the left, you have a main one to the right, and then you've got the right one that goes all the way up. It's got blooms on it at the very top. This is probably the longest one we've got. But it also splits off again. And it split off and got big enough where I had to put another roller hook on it. You can see it up there at the top. But like I said, all of these tomatoes that you see here, the little green clusters of tomatoes, up in there, there's a cluster. There's some more right up in there. There's two or three up in there. All of those got produced the last time we took the tarp down. Everything bloomed like it did up there. See how nice and bright and pretty those are? They're just bright yellow. Now that I've got everything down, those are going to turn into tomatoes so they can breathe again. There's some blooms up there. They're probably not going to make it, but those were pretty much covered by the blanket. So I think that's what's going to stunt their growth. The blanket had that almost the entire plant covered. And of course we got the ripe tomatoes also. We can't forget about those because those are going 
onto the plate tonight. We're gonna have a tomato and bologna sandwich, hopefully. There's some, there's some bigger size ones. They're not as big as the one that I showed you before that weighed a pound and six ounces. But I bet they taste just fine. Got some bigger ones over here. And once again, these have lived and made it. Uh -oh. That one's got a little bit too much water going to it. We're going to have to, let's definitely get it off quick. Got some more ribbons over here. Then we're back into the clusters. And again, I'm going to see and make sure, but there's really bright yellow blooms all on the tops of these here. And I think now that the wind can get to them, and not the 30 degree freezing gale winds, just the plain old gentle breeze that we've been having, those should pollinate, plus we got to, we'll help them a little bit. Get out here and, I don't know if you want to call it spanking them or putting a toothbrush to them or whatever, we've tried everything. Sometimes it seems to work, sometimes it don't, but I can tell you when that tarp is down, it makes a big, big difference. All right, let's check the water level and see how these things are doing. Now, I filled this water level up, I believe it was last Monday. You can tell there the temperature is 64 degrees. But the reason it's 64 degrees is because there's an aquarium here, right here. It's set to, I believe, to keep the water between 60 and 65 degrees. Otherwise, the water wouldn't freeze because it's constantly uh, circulating. But it would get down to like, the water temps would get down to 44 sometimes. And I figure since everything, tomato plants like it a little bit hotter, we keep try to keep the water up in the 60s at least. And last Monday, we put the water just below little cut out in the back that's not bad it's not drinking the water like it will in the summer when it's really hot but I bet when I put some nutrients in it tonight fill it back up and pick all these red tomatoes off we'll give it a little extra shot of, of Epsom salt to stop any blossoming rot I didn't see but one tomato that had that but hopefully they'll that'll make them take off and start growing these little bitty green tomatoes. Hopefully they'll get up growing in size and start turning red. And what we use to grow these tomatoes, we just five gallon bucket, we got perlite in the bottom of them. We've got links to almost everything you see here, besides the common stuff, PVC, bricks. What we're going to try to do is check back in about two weeks. And see the progress once I pick all these red tomatoes off and some of them that aren't quite ready yet we're gonna go ahead and just pick them let them finish ripening up inside the house and we're also got to come out here and probably like these leaves here they're brown around the edges and well, that's taking a lot of nutrients to keep those green. And if I'm looking at them correctly, I'll have to get up in there in the jungle. Those are probably going to get cut off. And we didn't start having that until it got really cold. As you can see here on, on this tree, on this plant even. See it's the dark green? And then out here you got real, real light green. It's a brand new growth. You got little bitty flowers or little bitty leaves up here. You got blooms on it that aren't even open yet. That's what I wanted to point out over here. You can see the more mature part of the plant down here is real dark green and dark green. And as it goes up, and the very top of it, where all the blooms are, nice pretty yellow bloom, it's real light green. That's where all your new growth is, and as you can tell, they're just jammed up there. So my question to anyone that's done this before is obviously they're going to run out of room or they're out of room at this point in time. So my question is, do I try to come out with another tomato roller 
and try to make them go across, which is going to be a problem because the fan's right there. Or, what I've heard of, I haven't haven't seen it, I haven't tried it, what I've heard people are doing is they'll take the tomato hooks, or the tomato roller hooks, and they'll drop it. And they'll drop it like 8 inches or so, which I guess would be like 2 clicks of the tomato hook, just to drop things down and give them some more room to grow. And I guess that would relax this down here and it would coil up or something, I'm not real sure, but if you've ever had that problem, contact me via the YouTube site or blog or Facebook and let me know. I'm going to try to keep these growing as long as I can. And as long as they're producing fruit, they're going to stay here. We'll put some links below the video where you can pick those up. There's a couple different places you can pick them up. We'll also put a link for the tomato clips. This is the best invention since sliced bread. You just drop the string down, hook that around the vine, and it holds everything up nice and pretty. Really works good. We use them out in the garden even. If you got any questions or comments, or if you have any advice, especially on the how to give them some more room at the top, please let me know uh, either via the YouTube channel, the East Texas Gardener. You can catch us on Facebook now. Go up to the top and look for East Texas Gardener. Should pull up the page. It'll have a picture of all the tomato plants back in their glory when they still had all their leaves. They look kind of naked now. It'll be easttexasgardener.blogspot.com There's several ways to reach us. Several different places to ask questions, make comments. We welcome all advice, all comments. I get to them as soon as I can. But I still got this thing called a job that gets in the way of my hobby, so. And we'll come back in, like I said, one to two weeks. Once all these red tomatoes are pulled off. We'll see what happens with the little bitty green ones over there. See how quick they start to mature and put some size to them and start turning red. Have any comment, place them below. They're one of the other social media sites. And until next time, thank you for watching.